Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to do a chit chat video to share with you guys about the way we shop, the things we buy, and what is enough. So, if you've watched my channel before, you'll know I don't do an unboxing video every week. I also love talking about my food spending because I'm a real person with a real job. So I believe in being smart with my money and I think that is something that a lot of people can relate to. So I want my channel to be a platform where we can all share our passion for luxury but at the same time not forgetting our real life responsibilities. Also, some of you guys messaged me to say you've just started your luxury collection. So I hope this video will be helpful because I wish I knew better earlier. In my 20s, shopping was a big part of my life. I was constantly looking for the next thing to buy and I often told myself my wardrobe was missing that one thing and if I bought that one thing, I wouldn't have to shop again. But of course, that didn't happen. So in my younger days, I didn't make a lot of good shopping decisions. There were a lot of impulse purchases and regrets. In fact, a lot of the clothing pieces I donated still had the price tags on. I also bought a number of designer handbags on impulse and later had to sell them and I ended up losing quite a lot of money. So now I can be a bit picky when it comes to buying anything. I always ask myself, do I love this item enough to keep it forever? Otherwise, it would just be a waste of time, money and space. I think one of the reasons I was buying so mindlessly was because I was shopping out of boredom. So I used to go to the shopping malls every weekend because I was bored. And then I found myself actively looking for things to buy just to make my trip worthwhile. And I ended up buying things I didn't even like that much. Worse still, I was too lazy to return them for a refund. And same thing happened to online shopping as well because I would spend hours scrolling down on the sales section just to look for a good bargain. And I think the turning point was when I had my little boy Isaac because I kind of lost all my leisure time, but it made me realize how many other activities I could be doing when I was bored. So I started taking a walk, doing journaling and just really enjoying the small things in life. For example, after a long week, I feel so blessed just to have a couple of hours to myself on Friday night and I can listen to my favorite music and audiobook. Now I still enjoy shopping so I'm not suggesting to never shop again but I think it's important to have a good balance because you don't want to spend all your casual hours chasing after the next thing to buy. Another thing I often do now is I really consider the opportunity cost when I want to buy something. For example, I will ask myself, can this money be spent on something else like a holiday, education or investment? I know it sounds completely boring, but it really helps me to spend my money more mindfully. I also want to talk about social media because it did affect my shopping habits. So about 9 to 10 years ago, when YouTube was fairly new, I would watch a lot of haul videos and when I saw something interesting or nice, I would just get it. And now social media is just part of life, so we are constantly being exposed to temptations and influence. So I think it's important to not get completely controlled by what you see on social media. Also, try not to get too carried away with the latest trends because they do come and go. I think a good example is the Dior saddle bag because at one point last year, everyone on Instagram was carrying this bag and if this was me in the past, I would have been quite tempted. But after so many shopping mistakes, I knew it's something I just had to admire from afar. So if something on social media catches your eye, really take a moment to see if this item will suit you and your lifestyle. More importantly, don't rush into anything. If you miss out on something, it's probably not meant to be. To be honest, I think it's better to miss out on something rather than being stuck with an impulse purchase that you will not enjoy. Along the same line with social media, I think it's also important to not buy just to keep up or impress. I have a YouTube channel, but I never let that be the reason to buy things just so I can show them in my videos. 
I simply buy what I love and I share them with you. To be honest, I know unboxing videos get a lot more views and I could probably grow my channel faster, but it was never my intention to run my channel that way. So I try to stay true to myself. Now, don't get me wrong, I think social media is great. I use YouTube a lot to do research before I buy anything, but it's also a platform where we can see what everyone else has. And if everyone is raving about a certain item, it can be hard not to get tempted. For me, I now try to appreciate a lot of the beautiful things I see without actually owning them. I think with a bit of self-control and gratitude, it's completely possible to watch whole videos without feeling like you don't have enough. And talking about whether a collection is too much or not, I just want to give my opinion about this. Personally, I think a collection is just right if every item is getting their fair share of attention from you. So let's say if you have 30 handbags, but all the handbags are being used very regularly, then it might just be a very reasonable collection. So that's why I think it's completely understandable for a full-time fashion blogger to have a very comprehensive closet. Whereas if you have a conventional 9 to 5 job, a more modest collection might work just fine for you. So I never use my lifestyle as a reference to judge other people if they have too much or too little because I don't believe that's a correct answer to it. It all just depends on what works well for you, your lifestyle and your budget. If you want to keep track of your collection, I would suggest to take a good look at your wardrobe every now and again. First of all, you will be less likely to buy a lot of repeat items. For example, if you already have 10 pairs of very similar looking jeans, you probably shouldn't buy another pair. Secondly, you will hopefully start wearing and loving those forgotten items. Thirdly, if you have a lot of unused items, it's a wake-up call that you should slow down on your shopping. And you might want to ask yourself, have you been buying things that don't really suit you? And that's why you don't use them. And can you fix that? So there you have it. I think I've covered everything about my shopping journey and the lessons I've learned. Ultimately, my advice is to enjoy luxury in a responsible and sustainable way because it's completely not worth it to go broke for looking good. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.